Let's go. When we first started working on the game, we realized pretty early on that the sound of Knockout City was just as important as the visuals. Something that was really important to us was the readability of the game. You need to get that instant player feedback. Positionally, uh, we do a lot to ensure that from an environment standpoint that you can hear what's directly in front of you and you ha that has your focus. Sounds that don't matter, you're not gonna hear so much. Something that we like to think about a lot as um, audio people is how much information can you give the player from just sound. If you go into the, go into the hideout and play catch with the dummy and listen for that, that sound when it's coming at you, catch a few balls and then close your eyes and I bet you can still catch that ball every time. We, we knew we were making a dodgeball game. When you get hit with a dodgeball, it reverberates through your head, and that is the sound of the ball just pinging off your skull. Yeah, it was a dodgeball, but you know, but this is future, so maybe it should be synthesized. Maybe it's completely fantastical. We really started to get uh, better results when we started adding in real layers of real dodgeballs. Something with this this texture that everybody that everybody knows. The main thing that I was concerned about was making sure that when you got hit, it felt like you got hit because you're really getting beat with these balls, and when you get KO'd and you're body goes flying unconscious across the, the, the landscape. We wanted it to, to really feel good. You can hear that. You can hear that sound in there really happening. Not only you KOing somebody, but when you got KO'd uh, and, and you start bouncing around and your, your limbs are hitting off the ground and everything like that, and your, your character's reacting, we wanted that to sound fun and funny and, and good. With VO, we definitely wanted to give the player lots of choice of expression. We really went for a wide range of timbers and tonalities with the, with the character voices. The direction I received was the weirdest direction I've ever received as an actor. Um, like, pretend you're picking up like a 10,000 pound boulder. Sure. Yeah! Just like that. We recorded an inordinate amount of pain takes and exerts and grunts and the ooh, ah, ooh, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh. Because again, we really wanted it to make it feel like it hurt. It was a very physical process, so I found myself um, pretending to throw, uh, squatting, um, putting my arms up uh, above my head, using my breath as much as possible, and I, I felt like I was like, doing a workout. Like it was, it was incredibly important to be physical with the sound in order for it to sound as realistic as possible. I knew we were getting good takes when they would make me laugh. I think my favorite line was, uh, it was kind of a evil cackle. <laughs> I was watching movies and reading articles about it, watching movies like um, American Graffiti and The Warriors, obviously. I just kept coming across these old radio DJs from the 50s and 60s, uh, specifically Wolfman Jack, uh, and specifically this guy Jocko, Jocko and the Rocket Ship Show. Like there's this, there's all this like secrecy around Wolfman Jack. He didn't want anybody to know who he was or like where where in the country he was. Was he actually off the shore in international waters? And that's why no one could catch him. And there was just the, that was just so interesting to me. To you have this this personality, this this voice. They're they're talking to you, and they're they're right in your ear. They're they're as close as they can possibly get to you. And they're everywhere. You can't you can't escape them because the radio signal goes everywhere. From that, I, I was like, well, we should have a, we should have a DJ in, in this game. I'm here yakking the yak and spinning the tracks while you dish out the wax in this brand new brawl. Let's see what you got. There should be something about that DJ that's that's a little mysterious, that's a little interesting. He runs a pirate radio station that plays music for brawlers, and he uh, he calls the shots. Um, Whenever there's a brawl going out, he knows exactly where it is, and he's telling everybody what's going on. He's like the, a referee, an MC, and a um, sports announcer all in one. KO City Pirate Radio, pumping out 50,000 watts of pure musical energy, guaranteed to get your blood pumping all your money back. How does he see all of these brawls? How could he possibly do that? Does he have cameras everywhere? It's like, no, that, that doesn't feel right. That doesn't feel cool. Uh, so I was like, oh, I know what's cool, he lives on the moon. Like, he lives on the moon and he has a giant telescope that he looks down on Knockout City with and he sees every single brawl going on. And that's why the, that's why the cops can't shut him down, no one can find him. 
and uh, no one can stop his uh, his broadcast. You know, from where I'm sitting, looking down on KO City, you realize it really is worth fighting for. Good luck out there. With music, much like the sound effects, we're going for like this retro futuristic um, kind of a sound. So where we started to make some progress was we break it out into different categories, like like. For the city, for example, um, we wanted to use a like a, a, a big band sound, and how that big band horn section uh, can really help to give that city some life, right? And then the the more synth and modern elements of it is clearly representing the future. There weren't that many games actually that have music during the during the gameplay. We had a very watchable game. And we also wanted to have a very listenable game. But the music we had in there, that was just like reference music. That was music that we just liked, that uh, we, weren't gonna, we weren't gonna be shipping with. So we knew that we needed music specifically for our game. I think it was Eric that was basically like, um, I need you to get me an award-winning soundtrack. Quote. It's very, <laughs> it's very difficult to create a new music genre. I, I understand that now. But at the time, I was like, let's, let's, Let's do something. Let's try to figure out something, something new and something fresh. And talking about the radio DJ, if you have a radio DJ, then that means you have a radio. And if you have the radio, that means you're not just listening to one band. You're listening to a whole bunch of different bands. And you never know who's going to be on the radio next. To, to have that, that feeling of listening to the radio, uh, we were like, OK, well, then let's have uh, a bunch of different bands. Let's name them. Let's come up with backstories for them. Uh, let's make sure that. When a song is playing, you can tell what band is, is, is playing it. With this multiple band approach that we were going after, we needed, we needed musicians that could really give us that wide range of style. And uh, that's when we found the Soundlings. When we sat down and tried to figure it out, each band was going to have their own sound. Um, and the cool thing that we did is before we even started working on a band, Matt and I would sit there and just talk about, you know, who is this band? What kind of in instruments do they have? Um, we like, became, we almost, be no, I can't say we, we became the band. <laughs> but in a we, way, we yeah, did. Yeah, we did. Uh, we go yeah. back and forth, just like, oh, maybe, you know, this band is just, there's no like live instruments, it's all keyboards. Like one band, like Rick and the Humans, like um, our idea was like Rick was an alien and he came from this planet where music was everything, you know? So he was just an insane player, insane writer, um, and he would get like all the best players around um, Knockout City um, to come play for him. And even those players were like struggling to keep up. And the, the funny thing is um, when we were writing that music, um, some of our players were struggling to keep up. Yeah, yeah, we had this uh, brass player call us up. He's a good friend of ours. He's an incredible player. He calls us up on FaceTime, and he's like trying to play one of the licks that we wrote, and he goes, do you see my fingers? They can't move that fast. <laughs> Knockout City is so different. It was such a kind of a purple cow scenario where you saw something and you're like, I know what this is, but I've never seen it done like this before. And that's kind of like where we approached it with the music too, it, like with all the walking bass lines and stuff like that from the 1950s. It was like, yeah, you're hearing that kind of like 1950s vibe, but you're hearing it in a completely different way. We're like, we can't just do like a regular walking bass. Like, you know, let's throw some crazy synth, you know, underneath that walking bass sound to blend the modern and the retro. Um, and it would turn into something really cool. For me personally, the, the music and the audio design, it's like 50% of the game. Uh, it just, it adds so much to the game and uh, adds so much personality and things that I didn't even know were missing until it was put in the game. Knockout City's a welcoming place, but you're gonna get your ass kicked too. And the sounds help bring that to life. Okay. Okay. Um, bye. Ha, ha, ha.